why don't we take 60 to 120 seconds just for you to explain effective altruism. Your name is often associated just so we have a definition of terms and people have some idea of the scope and meaning of effective altruism uh, since you're considered uh, one of the creators or co-creators of this entire movement. If you wouldn't mind just explaining that briefly and uh, that way people will have at least that as a landmark as we go forward. Effective altruism is a philosophy and a community that's about trying to figure out how can we do as much good as possible with the time and money we have, and then taking action on that basis, so putting those ideas into practice to actually try to make the world better as effectively as possible, whether that's through our donations, with our careers, with how we vote, with our consumption decisions, just with our entire lives. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the outcomes of that? Yeah, so, you know, I've been promoting these ideas along with others for over 12 years now. Um, We've raised well over um, or moved well over the billion dollars to the most effective causes. Uh, So that means if we take just one charity that we've raised money for against Malaria Foundation, uh, we've protected over 400 million people, mainly children, from malaria. And statistically, that means we've saved about 100,000 lives Mm. or maybe a little more. Uh, which is, you know, the size of a small town, about the size of Oxford. Mm -hmm. And that's just one charity. There's several more within global health and development. I think in terms of uh, other cause areas that we focused on within animal health and welfare, hundreds of millions of um, hens are no longer in cages because of corporate cage-free campaigns that we've helped to fund. And then within the field of existential risks, there are... You know, it's not as easy to say, oh, we've done this concrete thing. This thing would have killed us all, but we avoided it. But we have helped make AI safety a much more mainstream field of the search. People are taking the potential benefits, but also the risks from AI, like much more seriously than they were. We are also like, have invested a lot in certain pandemic preparedness measures. Again, it's kind of still early stages, but some of the technology there or things I think have really promising potential to action, at least, making sure that COVID-19 is the last pandemic we ever have. One of the many things I appreciate about you, and also, broadly speaking, many people in the effective altruism community slash movement, is the taking of a systematic approach to not just defining, but questioning assumptions and quantitatively looking at how you can do good, not just feel good if that makes sense. And yeah. it seems obvious to anyone who's in the community, but the vast majority of, of philanthropy or charity, broadly speaking, is done without that type of approach, from what I can tell. And uh, it's, it's really worth taking a closer look for those people listening. Are there just a few URLs you'd like to mention for people who'd like to dig into that, and then we can, then we can move into some of the more current questions? For sure. So if you're interested in how to use your career to make the world better, then 80,000hours.org is you know, a terrific place to go. I'm a co-founder of that organization. Gives in-depth career advice and one-on-one um, career coaching as well. If you're interested in donating some of your money, uh, then givingwhatwecan.org encourages people to take a giving pledge, uh, typically 10% of one's income or more. It's a great way to live. If you're interested in donating to effective charities, then givewell.org is the single best place for donating to global health and development charities. That's givewell.org. There's also the Effective Altruism Funds, or EA funds, that allow you to donate within animal welfare and existential risks and kind of promotion of these ideas as well. 